Alrighty, so we're going to start with the bendy bits. There's the basic, one of the basic ailerons. And I've bent it, and you can, what on earth? Hmm, it's a crocheted cow. My, my son just threw that in there for fun. Um, the tips here have to be rolled over to meet one another, so I did that by taking a piece of piano wire and rolling it in my fingers, top and bottom, both sides, because those are curled. That's what I'm trying to show you there. Of course, colored all the edges. And there is one of the pieces of rib that's balsa that's on there. Those two little pieces are going to be the control horns. And then this is an internal piece that's going to be like at the edge of the hinge line. And you can see it's got interesting, uh, an interesting cutout, but it'll make sense when you start doing it. So the first thing to do once you cut it out is to, in my case, I turned it over and then I embossed my little uh, edges where the flaps are going to be, the little, the little tabs, so they will bend over and be a clean bend because they're going to be the edges and they're going to, that's how it basically is attaching to the paper. And you do that, you know, all the way around all of those parts, you make sure that they come together. And if you can't tell what's, you know, how to do it, then you can go on the front. That's okay. But those two little pieces, uh, the little saw teeth there, um, or that larger one, there's a bend that's going to be a right angle bend. So make a bend there, a, 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 a little emboss there, and then emboss right there. And those are going to become, when we put it together, you'll see how those go together. It's actually pretty slick. So then you squeeze these over, and um, the hardest part is to make sure that they actually go over and are, you know, and are hidden. Um, if it's a little extra sticking out, you can always recolor it a little bit with uh, a marker or your paint. Um, but you can see that's going to be on the leading edge um, of the inside part of the aileron, the part that protrudes out. And then there'll be a long strip, which will be the hinge line. And then there's a piece that goes bends the other way. There's a little N on the on the uh, uh, rib, and that should I guess that means top, which is kind of cute. But this piece, what I did was it's going to fit right there behind, and, and give you form and shape, and that'll give the whole aileron shape. Um, but you slide that in like this. At least I did this. That's kind of where it's going to go. And this, by the way, is one sixteenth balsa this time because it's what I had. But uh, I think it also might be useful. It seems to be pretty close to what they want you to use. Put a little glue in there, and then I slid this in, again, making sure it's not upside down. So I checked to make sure I've got the beige on the beige on the bottom part and the greenish color on the top, green-brown on the top. PC-10, pardon me. Um, and then once that's all nice and dry, which doesn't take long, um, you can then bend this, and you can see... Oh, I'm bending down those big long tabs, which you just sort of do incrementally, at least this is how I did it. And you make sure they're at right angles, essentially, because that's what's going to, again, attach to your um, inside of your aileron there. That is where that piece is going to go, and you make sure, that rib, and then you make sure that that curl piece that you put on the tip actually fits. Add some glue all along the, the component. And you do really do top or bottom. I forget which one I'm doing here, but doesn't make any difference. Slide that in and make sure it's butted right up to the edge. And you can see there, if my head will get out of the way, that that's where the uh, making sure sort of that it's going to match along the other part. So you put that on there, make sure it's glued and make sure the paper rolls. It's a, it's a slight curve up there. Make sure it touches the rib and you get glue on and all that stuff. And make sure that that is even. Um, and again, it's supposed to be the edge of the the edge of that leading edge overlap, the, the balance part of the aileron. And then that's going to go just like that along the, the long piece. So once that rib part is dry and you got started, then I went ahead and put glue all the way down the hinge line. And uh, um, you know, it doesn't, doesn't take a lot. Um, and you just you want to take your time because you got to, when you put this in, it's got to be up to the edge. And you and it's got to actually glue to this piece, and it's just paper. So, I prefer more structure inside things like these ailerons. I think they could have used more ribs, more wood or, or cardboard. To me, having just paper on the edges to me is a little dicey, uh, but I think it's going to work ultimately. Um, and then I use the back end of my tweezers, tweezer handle here. You use anything you want just to make sure I got good contact with the the, the strip or the or the uh, tab and the 
aileron. And there you go. Make sure everything is even, there's no glue squeeze out. And then you add the last part. That's way too much glue, which I took off subsequently with my finger, I believe. Um, just, you know, well, yeah, see, I'm not that much of a slob. And um, fold that over. And on all the ailerons, everything fit. One aileron wasn't quite right. I probably cut it quite a little bit differently. So I had to actually cut these pieces that I'm that are folded here apart and then just cut a little piece off and make it a little bit smaller. And it's fine. It's just supposed to be the edging. And then you just kind of take a good eye look and look sure everything's okay. Then you're just going to fold that right over or put glue on it. Super easy. Self-explanatory. I'm making sure that that piece is going to actually fold over and they're going to touch, which it will. And as long as that's okay, then it's time to um, add the glue all along the rib and all along the edge. I put some glue up here really quickly and then put some right around the edge because that's going to have to come together. And then you just fold this over carefully and make sure everything lines up. Um, I did, by the way, the trailing edge. I, I came from the back side and drew a line and then... Um, um, where that's going to be, and then emboss that from the back side, so I have a nice, um, a nice sharp bend back there. Um, anyway, slide this over, and I'm just making sure that everything's in contact. You don't want lumps or bubbles. The worst part about this, without any kind of internals, there's no ribs in there except for that one tip right there. That's the only place where there's a rib. Um, the paper's thick on this model, so it holds its shape and looks pretty good. But what I don't like about that is that you don't have any internal structure to really continue, keep the, 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 the airfoil or whatever the way it is. So sometimes you end up with little you know, convex surfaces. In this case, this is straight. It's pretty good. That looks good. Um, a couple of other ailerons are a little bit twisted. I don't know how that happened, but they'll be okay once they're on there. Anyway, that looks surprisingly lovely. Um, and it doesn't look bulbous in places um, when you see it in person. I usually have little areas that I don't like, especially around curves, uh, and a leading edge usually when they curve around. So I just sand those pieces off and then recolor them with a little bit of my marker or with paint, whatever works for you. And uh, on these markers, remember, a lot of times they're not exactly what you what the color is. They're close. Oh, now I fold it over. Those the horns, by the way, are just folded over paper. You know how to do that. Um, sandwiched, folded, and then cut out colored around the edges and then I'm just adding these with white glue to the little spots. You can see there's a little place there where they actually show you where the aileron control horn goes. And just drop those on, eyeball them, make sure they're straight, um, make sure they're on there and uh, you should be fine. And you just let them dry. You probably should wait to put these on but I'm, you know, the problem here now is you end up putting the thing down and the, those those things can pop right off. So. I'm just checking to make sure everything looks pretty good. That came together nicely, which is awesome. And so there's an aileron. And then there's three others. Two tops. And then the other bottom. So that's all there is to making those. They're, they're pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. And from here, I decided to move on to the uh, stabilizers and the elevators. Which aren't even separated. But you'll see they're easy to put together. They've got a main balsa spar. I'm showing you the part that's the bottom. That big opening is where the uh, it's going to hold get under the fuselage. I poked holes for the various struts on in the top and bottom of these because that's where some struts are going to go to hold the rudder um, and also to hold the biplane nature of the structure together. I drew a line where that spar goes, so I just have a, a reference point where it's supposed to go. And then this piece is going to be... I'm going to go in that window area, and you'll see what that's going to do. Basically make it look like it's finished. Um, but again, the only wooden part on here uh, is this spar. Now the edges, you notice, have little tabs on them, and those actually worked out really well. They actually help give it kind of shape in that, kind of get out of the way. Um, you, when you when you put pieces of paper with glue together, sometimes they they squish down too tight and you just get flat, and you don't want flat, you want a shape. Uh, but anyway, and they so they work it really well. Now here I'm just trying to figure out and make sure, because I am I think I'm dyslexic, because I will put them upside down. You want to make sure that the beige 
associates with the beige side and the green associated with the green. Now I made a mistake there. I should have put this thing around that spar first, but since I didn't, all I did was cut that one piece out and then I'm just going to glue it directly to the edge of the spar and it worked out fine. It's not, it's definitely not the end of the world, but I probably should have put that on the spar kind of like I'd, where I did the little rib in the aileron in those front pieces. Um, I could have put the spar in, um, tape it down to get it, you know, exactly where I want it. And then I could have put the, I could have marked where this piece goes and then put it all in. Uh, but I didn't do that. But in this case, this is fine. You just slide that in to the whole opening. And, um, and this is where this kit fits very well. As long as you have done all of your cutting precisely, everything, everything fits. I mean, like when I turn this over right now, I'm doing this blind and you don't know how much is out into that opening and how much is going to look stupid and overlapping it doesn't looks really good so here i am putting the uh little uh airfoil shaped edges on and uh, the tips of those have saw teeth because there's a round because that's where it's going to curve all the way around and make a make a uh, um, has to come in contact with the curved portion of the leading edge um, but basically put those on either side make sure they're straight they're a little dicey because they're so small. And now I'm making sure that these are going to line up, and they are, making sure they don't have any overlap. And uh, see that pillowy nature? That's what I worry about, is that pillowy, pillowiness. And it turns out it worked out fine. But So you add glue on that piece, and you add glue along the spar. So I did that first, rather than trying to do it all at once, because you can get the little glue applicator on the edges and on the trailing edge after you've done all that, and that way... You can get concentrating in the main parts done. Um, so, a little too much glue as per usual. Um, and then I fold this over, and you just take care to make sure it, it, it lines up. So I'm trying to make sure the trailing edge will line up when it's time. But I'm also focusing on trying to get the spar glued in place first. Um, so my thumb there is running down the, where the spar is going to go. It's got little swept edges right there, so I'm squeezing those together because those give you this, this curve. It's not flat over there. It's got like a little curve that goes up, up and down. Both edges come down on each respective side a little bit to give you the right profile. Um, and there I see I had to pull it off and make sure it actually attached to the rear. And once I've got it pretty good, now I start to give it a little more pressure, um, trying to make sure it's gluing and it's going to be nice and straight. And then... Um, I play with the center part, and that just means you just play around with that, uh, make sure it's, it looks okay. Then I put in my part for my trailing edge, put in my glue, and when you slide this down, it comes out really nice. You see some of the glue squeezing out. And again, I'm making sure that I don't have any bulbous portions of the fabric sticking up, um, the, the, the paper that, that's supposed to be the fabric, because you don't, that looks really dumb when they're thick. And again, with more ribs, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, and then I go to the edges, do the very same thing. Make sure it's just glue around the corners and glue on that flap. And then um, close that. And I end up usually using tweezers and stuff to close them. I use my fingers at first, and then I got to sort of play with tweezers. Because sometimes you'll close it and it'll flop open. And until you get the glue to really start to adhere, which only takes some pressure, really, um, then uh, then you're good. And you just make sure those edges aren't Look like don't look like spaghetti and don't roll around and look like little esque turns and stuff. You make sure they're flat. You, they're supposed to be like you'd imagine them to be. Um, so anyway, that doesn't look so bad. Again, had a couple places I wanted to address here, especially around those curves. I always end up having like these little steps on the curves. And again, if I was Czech or Polish, I suppose that wouldn't happen. But for me, it always happens. So I just, you know, a little bit of makeup dress up the pig it'll look fine and there's a part where the rear the underside was a little bit showing through a little bit through so just just give it a little bit of you know pretend it's your girlfriend and she's all dolled up and then when you remove the makeup you're horrified you know um so um just make sure it looks the way you want it to look that part isn't as important because that's going to be in the fuselage back there near the near the rear of the fuselage so that'll probably kind of be hidden haven't looked exactly where that's going to go. But uh, the harder she blows, um, there's where the horns go. And um, But in general, 
there is the bottom one, and there's the top one. The top one's much easier to do because it didn't have that interior piece, so I didn't show you that. But they're going to be a biplane like that. That one's going to be on top of the other with some struts, and then the, the rudders fit in between them too. So it's going to look really cool when it's done. Looks really good. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. So now here's the rudders. So there's the rudder piece, and notice that. Um, and what I've done is cut this out and folded it and colored it just like normal. It's the same old thing we've always done. Make sure everything fits. Make sure it overlaps where it's supposed to. But you notice in this picture that that black piece, that thing, is one continuous piece of wire. So it goes up to the areas where there's where the rudder holds and also a forward strut. But I didn't want to do that. I think that would be hard to bend. So I want to make it separate. So I made that one separate to one piece. This strut I will make separate. That'll be piece number two. And then I will later come back, bend this part, which is like a, a skid for the bottom of the stabilizer, and put that in afterwards when it's all done. I just have a feeling that putting all that in together, it's a good idea, but it'll be hard. That dotted line is where a rib goes. And there's my rib. And you notice that I've already cut a piece of wire, impregnated it, squished it into the piece of wood. So I've cut that out of balsa. That's the rib. And then I put a slot down the middle of it, embossed a slot, and then I put my wire in that slot uh, with super glue. So it's glued in there, and then I've got the actual rib form already attached. But that's all, everyone can do those things. That's not hard. Just glued it in. And now you're ready to fold this thing over and make yourself a nice, a nice, uh, um, nice rudder. So this is very self-explanatory. You fold it over, and you just make sure all the parts are squished together and nice. And then you touch up as necessary, using the tweezers a lot for this. And these tweezers are nice because they got a little broader bill on them, little tip on them. They're not so pointy. And that gives me a little bit more distribution of pressure, I think. It works well. Anyway, again, uh, I've been having questions about is this how old is this kit and everything. It says 2003 on the plans. Um, and to me, it seems computer drawn. It doesn't seem, there's, there's another kit of this airplane by Modelic, and it looks a little bit rough. This looks nice. But there's, right there is where I'm going to put more horns, but uh, on either side. But there's the, the rudder, and it just fits like, right, just like that. Looks perfect. And see, these pictures are nice because they're one-to-one. -one. And this is just to show you, this is how it's going to go in between the stabilizers. Pretty sweet.